Hello. I'm going to continue reading Dear Mr. Henshaw, November 22nd. Dear Mr. Henshaw, I wasn't going to answer any more of your questions, but Mom won't get the TV repaired because she says it was rotting my brain. This is Thanksgiving vacation, and I'm so bored I decided to answer a couple of your rotten questions with my rotten brain. Joke. What is your family like? Since Dad and Bandit went away, my family is just Mom and me. We all used to live in a mobile home outside of Bakersfield, which is in California's Great Central Valley we studied about in school. When Mom and Dad got divorced, they sold the mobile home and Dad moved into a trailer. Dad drives a big truck, a cab over job. That means the cab is over the engine. Some people don't know that. The truck is why my parents got divorced. Dad used to drive for someone else, hauling stuff like cotton, sugar beets, and other produce around Central California and Nevada but he couldn't get owning his own rig for cross-country hauling out of his head. He worked practically at night and day and saved a down payment. Mom said we'd never get out of that mobile home when he had to make such big payments on that rig, and she'd never know where he was when he hauled cross-country. His big rig sure is a beauty, with, with the bunk and the cab and everything. His rig, which truckers call a tractor, but everyone else calls a truck, has ten wheels, two in front and eight in back, so he can hitch up to anything, flatbeds, refrigerated vans, a couple of gondolas. In school, they teach you that a gondola is some kind of boat in Italy, but in the U.S., it is a container for hauling loose stuff like carrots. My hand is all worn out from all this writing, but I try to treat Mom and Dad the same, so I'll get to Mom next time. Your pooped reader, Lee Botts. November 23rd, Mr. Henshaw. Why should I call you dear when you are the reason I'm stuck with all this work? It wouldn't be fair to leave Mom out, so here's question three continued. Mom works part-time for Catering by Katie, which is run by a real nice lady Mom knew when she was growing up in Taft, California. Katie says all women who grew up in Taft had to be good cooks because they went to so many potluck suppers. Mom and Katie and some other ladies made fancy food for weddings and parties. They also baked cheesecake and apple strudel for restaurants. Mom is a good cook. I w just wish she would do it more at home, like the mother in Moose on Toast. Almost every day, Katie gives Mom something good to put in my school lunch. Mom also takes a couple of courses at the community college. She wants to be an LVN, which means licensed vocational nurse. They help real nurses, except they don't stick needles in people. She is almost always home when I get home from school. Your ex-friend, Lee Botts. November 24th. Mr. Henshaw, here we go again. Number four, where do you live? After the divorce, Mom and I moved from Bakersfield to Pacific Grove, which is on California's central coast, about 20 miles from the sugar refinery at Spreckles, where Dad used to haul sugar beets before he went cross-country. Mom said all the time she was growing up in California's great central valley, she longed for a few ocean breezes, and now we've got them. We've got a lot of fog, especially in the morning. There aren't any crops around here, just golf courses for rich people. We live in a little house, a really little house, that used to be somebody's summer cottage a long time ago before somebody built a two-story duplex in front of it. Now it is what they call a garden cottage. It is sort of falling apart, but it is all we can afford. Mom says at least it keeps the rain off, and it can't be hauled away on a flatbed truck. I have, a, I have a room of my own. My mom sleeps on a couch in the living room. She fixed the place up real nice with things from the thrift shop down the street. Next door is a gas station that goes ping, 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 ping every time a car drives in. They turn off the pinger at 10 o'clock p.m., but most of the time I am asleep by then. Mom doesn't want me to hang around the gas station. On our street, besides the thrift shop, there's a pet shop, a sewing machi machine shop, an electric shop, a couple of junk stores they call antique shops, plus a Taco King and a Softy Freeze. I am not supposed to hang around those places either. Mom is against hanging around any place. Sometimes when the gas station isn't pinging, I can hear the ocean and the sea lions barking. They sound like dogs, and I think of Bandit. To be continued, unless we get the TV fixed. Still disgusted, Lee Botts. November 26th, Mr. Henshaw. If our TV was fixed, I would be looking at Highway Patrol. But it isn't. So here we are. Some more answers from my rotten brain. Ha ha. Number five. Do you have any pets? 
I do not have any pets. My teacher says I always answer questions in a complete sentence. When mom and dad got divorced and mom got me, dad took Bandit because mom said she couldn't work and look after a dog. And dad said he likes to take Bandit in the truck because it is easier to stay awake on long haul if he has him to talk to. I really miss Bandit, but I guess he's happier riding around with dad. Like the father said in Ways to Amuse a Dog, dogs get pretty bored just lying around the house all day. That is what Bandit would have to do with mom and give and me gone so much. Bandit likes to ride. That's how we got him. He just jumped into dad's cab at a truck stop in Nevada and sat there. He had a red bandana around his neck instead of a collar. So we called him Bandit. Sometimes I lie awake at night listening to the gas station ping-pinging and thinking about dad and Bandit hauling tomatoes or cotton bales on Interstate 5. And I am glad Bandit is there to keep dad awake. Have you ever seen Interstate 5? It is straight and boring with nothing much but cotton fields and a big feedlot that you can smell a long way before you come to it. It is so boring that the cattle on the feedlot don't even bother to moo. They just stand there. They don't tell you the part in school when they talk about California's great Central Valley. I'm getting writer's cramp from all this writing. I'll get to number six next time. Mom says not to worry about the postage, so I can't use that as an excuse for not answering. Pooped writer, Lee Botts. <clears throat> November 27th, Mr. Henshaw, here we go again. I'll never write another list of questions for an author to answer no matter what the teacher said. Number six, do you like school? School is okay, I guess. That's where the kids are. The best thing about sixth grade in my new school is that I hang in. I'll get out. <clears throat> Number seven, who are your friends? I don't have a whole lot of friends in my new school. Mom says maybe I'm a loner, but I don't know. A new boy in school has to be pretty cautious until he gets to know who's who. Maybe I'm just a boy nobody pays much attention to. The only time anybody paid much attention to me was in my last school when I gave the book report on ways to amuse a dog. After my report, some people went to the library to get the book. The kids were here paying more attention to my lunch than they do to me. They really, wa they really watch to see what I have in my lunch because Katie gives me such good things. I wish somebody would... Ask me over sometime. After school, I stay around kicking a soccer ball with some of the other kids so they won't think I'm stuck up or anything. But nobody asks me over. Number eight, who was your favorite teacher? <laughs> I don't have a favorite teacher, but I really like Mr. Fridley. He's the custodian. He's always fair about who gets to pass out milk at lunchtime. And once, when he had to clean up after someone who threw up in the hall, he didn't even look cross. He just said... Looks like somebody's been whooping it up and started sprinkling sawdust around. Mom used to get mad at Dad for whooping it up, but she didn't mean throwing up. She meant he stayed too long at the truck stop outside of town. Two more questions to go. Maybe I won't answer them, so there. Ha ha. Lee Botts. December 5th. The first. Mr. Henshaw. Okay, you win. Because Mom is still nagging me and I don't have anything else to do, I'll answer your last two questions if it takes all night. What bothers you? What bothers me about what? I don't know what you mean. I guess I'm bothered by a lot of things. I am bothered when someone steals something out of my lunch bag. I don't know enough about the people in the school to know who to suspect. I am bothered about little kids with runny noses. I don't mean I am fussy or anything like that. I don't know why. I am just bothered. I am bothered about walking to school slow. The rule is nobody is supposed to be on the school grounds until 10 minutes before the first bell rings. Mom has an early class. The house is so lonely in the morning when she is gone that I can't stand it and leave when she does. I don't mind being alone after school, but I do in the morning before the fog lifts and our cottage seems dark and damp. Mom tells me to go to school but to walk slow, which is hard work. Once I tried walking around every square on the sidewalk, but that got boring. So did walking heel-toe, heel-toe. Sometimes I walk backwards except when I cross the street. But I still get there so early I have to sort of hide behind the shrubbery so Mr. Fridley won't see me. I am bothered when my dad telephones me and finishes by saying, Well, keep your nose clean, kid. Why can't he say he misses me? And why can't he call me Lee? I am bothered when he doesn't phone at all, which is most of the time. I have a book of road maps and try to follow his trips when I hear from him. When the TV worked, I watched the weather on the news so I would know if he was driving through blizzards, tornadoes, hail like golf balls, or any of that fancy weather they have other places in the U.S. Number 10, what do you wish? 
I wish somebody would stop stealing the good stuff out of my lunchbox. I guess I wish I a lot of other things, too. I wish someday Dad and Bandit would pull up in front of the rig. Maybe Dad would be hauling a 40-foot reefer. That means refrigerated trailer, which would make the outfit add up to 18 wheels altogether. Dad would yell out of the cab, Come on, Lee, hop in and I'll give you a lift to school. Then I'd climb in and Bandit would wag his tail and lick my face. We'd take off with all the men in the gas station staring after us. Instead of going straight to school, we'd go barreling along the freeway looking down on the tops of ordinary cars, then down the off-ramp and back to school just before the bell rang. I guess I wouldn't seem so medium then, sitting up there in the cab in front of a 40-foot reefer. I'd jump out and Dad would say, So long, Lee, be seeing you. And Bandit would give a little bark like goodbye. I'd say, Drive carefully, Dad, like I always do. Dad would take a minute to write in the truck's logbook. Drove my son to school. Then the truck would pull away from the curb with all the kids staring and wishing their dads drove big trucks too. There, Mr. Henshaw, that's the end of your crummy questions. I hope you are satisfied for making me do all this extra work. Fooey on you, Lee Botts. Thank you. Have a great day.